Uh, okay, well, you'll have to teach me. Remember, we never practiced that. So, gotcha. Uh, I don't even know how to do that. So, uh, I'm just being real. So, anyway, let's get on to it. I know this is what y'all came for. And let's rock and roll with it. I don't understand why this screen share thing keeps popping up. So, let's talk about love languages. And um, we want to go. Sure, you got to press in. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. <clears throat> Lord God of heaven, we just thank you. We give you praise, Father. We thank you for just um, being with us, guiding us, and strengthening us. And thank you for you know allowing us to have a little bit of fun this morning. But um, we just want your word to go through today. Excuse me. We want you to get all the glory. We want everything to be about you. So um, just move right now, Lord God, on my heart and you know, upon the hearts of each and every last person of CSC so that we can come together, so that we can understand what the spirit of God is trying to tell us and help us, Lord God, to move in a direction that um, blesses you um, this day, this morning. And we just give you all the honor, the glory, and um, praise to your son, Lord Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you for reminding me about that. So this is not going to be your typical love language um, conversation. So, you know, again, I'm just going to be real. I'm giving y'all a little bit of warning before I even start. In fact, some of the people that have been around CSC might even remember this particular graphic um, because this graphic goes with um, the very first video that I ever did to put up online for CSC, which will give you a little bit of back background of uh, something about what we'll be talking about. But this goes right into everything that we've been going through um, in the last couple of weeks. So the first thing I want to do is I want uh, let's do a, a refresher over this stronghold thing, okay? I'm not going to go too deep into it, but I'm just going to say the enemy wants to divide. Fear and misunderstandings are a weapon. Um, he wants you to lean on your understanding, not lean uh, on God's understanding. Uh, we love to put people into boxes. We just talked about that two or three weeks ago. And then right under that, I had Zodiac, Enneagram, Myers-Briggs, blah, 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 as saying that these are examples of a stronghold, okay? And we have to remember that a person is not one personality. So there are some scripture down there, if you guys wanna take a look at it, um, to get, give an understanding of the background of that. So these are the five love languages written by Gary Chapman, PhD. And these are the ones that most people are used to or have heard about. So they are words of affirmation, physical touch, receiving gifts, quality time, and acts of service. So there are different ways in order to um, communicate these things and actions to take to do these things. Um, and this is how you would do each and every last one of these things. Um, so it's, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, if somebody uh, feels like they need words of affirmation, then you are to encourage them, affir you know, affirm who they are and what they need, appreciate them, listen actively to them. Um, you can do as an action. They're saying, you know, you can give them notes, a text, a card, and generally encourage often, blah, blah, blah. One of the things that I think a lot of us might be going through um, right now being um, single is that, you know, certain things, especially like physical touch and quality time, uh, I would think are very heavy on a lot of the singles in the group. I could be wrong. But, you know, because everybody is different, but I would think that these two would probably pop up right now in this moment. And one of the things that you'll find out about the love languages, um, you know, if you if you study it, um, depending upon, like I say, who's doing the background, you know, not just the book itself, but who's doing the background of talking about it. You know, they say you have to take the test about every one to two years. And the reason why you have to take the test for the love languages is because your love language is changed. Because at the end of this, we need to understand why we are responding to them, why we are needing of them. Okay? So why do we respond to the love languages? Well, we respond because we understand maybe an experience or understand a situation. But when it comes to the love languages, uh, part of that desire is coming from the lack of the item. The reason why I can personally say that, you know, physical touch and quality time are right now at the highlight 
of my love languages is just simple because I'm single. So I don't have a romantic person touching me. I don't have a person that I can spend quality time with. That is missing. You know, that is just missing. Um, but generally, when I'm in a relationship, like when I was in my um, marriage, the biggest thing that I loved was quality time, acts of service, and as crazy as it sounds, receiving gifts. But I didn't necessarily need a gift, per se, but I did like little thoughtful gestures. Um, and things like that. So physical touch only showed up when I became single. Because when I was married, my, you know, my wife was, you know, touchy feely. So, you know, she had no problem with that. She did that naturally. And there was no lack there. So that is the whole thing with this. And we see it in Proverbs because we see a full soul um, does not necessarily like a honeycomb, because that's what loatheth means. Um, but, a hung, but to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. So when you really are hungry, if you've really been out here and you're lonely and you're tired and you want somebody, and this is where we have to be really concerned as Christians and not just as Christians, as people, um, is that you can get caught up because you, your desire is so strong for just something to feel that hungry soul that you can end up with the wrong person and or the wrong situation. And a lot of people probably know exactly what I'm talking about. So let me know if y'all can't hear this. I think you should. Anyway, I, uh, could y'all hear that just that, that second? I'll say this really. Okay. So this, believe it or not, is from the very first recorded Christian Singles Connect um, video. And, um, this video, this lady right here, was the one that wanted me to record it, and this is why all of our all of our stuff is recorded um, now. You know, she pops up in the group every once in a while, but you will see, you'll probably see some familiar faces. But I'm just going to let you listen to um, this uh, this video. Okay, so this video back in the day, we were really enneagram heavy. Uh, enneagram is just a personality test. You might hear me talk about it from time to time. People in the group talk about it from time to time. We don't study the Enneagram anymore because God told us to stay away from it. But I do believe that this right here kind of illustrates a really good understanding um, as, you know, before we go any further. Anyway, I, I'll say this really quick for Keandra, you know, so her man can, uh, can see it. But yeah, um, <laughs> fixes always, like I said, you know, when they first meet you, they are big eyed. They are trying to figure out, like I say, if you're safe, they want to make sure that um, they're in a place of comfort and that you are not crazy. You're not a crazy person. That's um, true. And it can basically drive other people crazy because most people want to come into a relationship um, in a not guilty mode. And sixes kind of put you in a guilty mode. They're saying, okay, you're guilty until I prove you innocent. Yes. Um, instead of the other way around. <laughs> yeah, um, we as you up. Okay. The way our percentages work is it's like we all remember we all have all nine enneagrams in our head. It's just about the percentage amounts and where they are. So okay. you said it based all all of them are based all of the enneagrams are based in fear. So what happens when you <laughs> overcome those fears? Well, see, that's the whole point of like moving towards God. Even what does God say over and over again to the Israelites? Mm -hmm. Do not be afraid. Okay. okay, so now we're back. So even back then, you know, the whole thing with the Enneagram and the reason why I brought it up to make sure that we understand it for sixes, what sixes needed is not on this list. Okay. Because the, the, the concept of a baseline Enneagram 6 was that they walk in a level of fear that um, they need, you could almost say words of affirmation would be their thing. But what they're really looking for is this. And that's why this um, picture was there, um, was the cover. Because what they're looking for, she's the six. And they're looking for protection. They're looking for somebody to protect them. So what you see with the love languages and what you see with all of these things is what they're trying to do is they're trying to fill this hole. 
See, there's a hole there. And they're trying to fill the hole. And that's why God sees them as a stronghold. And that's why I, I said, this, this is not going to be the message y'all thought it was going to be. Okay? So do we need all of the love languages? The truth is, yes. We need all of them. The reason why one of them pops up is simple. You're not getting it. That's it. That, that's, that's really the thing. So for each and every last person, what you should be thinking about right now is how can I give all five of these things to each and every last person I run into? That is your challenge. You know, we constantly talk about giving ourselves away. You give yourselves away because what you don't want is you don't want lack. You don't want lack in any of these things. Excuse me. If you don't talk to your spouse, if you don't encourage your spouse, you are not affirming them. If you don't touch your spouse, and I'm not talking about sexual, I'm talking about just a hug, like they say, a kiss, holding hands, they will desire it. If they never get gifts, a lot of guys have problems with this. If they don't give gifts, and most people about gifts, they, you know, a lot of women don't even need big gifts. They just need little gifts. They need you to go into the store and buy them a card. And for all the new guys that have never heard me, here is a trick, a trick that I use and a trick that you can use. If you're in the store and you have not bought your significant other something within a month and you see somebody in front of you celebrating an anniversary because they're buying flowers and or balloons and or something like that, get out of line, go get a candy bar, a uh, a card, a balloon, I don't give a flip what it is, then get back in line. And when you go home, tell your wife, you know, or your girlfriend or your fiance, I was just thinking about you. I got this because I was thinking about you. She don't have to know that it was a guy in front of, in front of you that was celebrating the anniversary. This will make it very random when she gets these gifts. And it'll always make it seem like you care. Because a lot of times it's not a big gift that they're what they're looking for. They're just looking for something. So a lot of times it'd be two or three dollars. But if they don't get this, that's a lack. Quality time. A lot, you know, I have a guy the other day talk to me privately, and I'm not gonna tell you his name, but he was telling me about the fact that he was having problems with his wife. And that their, um, their relationship was going to pot and he was even thinking about getting a divorce. And, you know, as I started to go into it, I was like, dude, you know, you're not spending any quality time with her. And he was like, well, I don't know what to do, you know, because I got my job and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, well, at least try to send her something, you know, via text. You know, at least try to do something to keep that communication going. You know, call her and talk to her 15 minutes in the middle of the day, you know, something to try to show that you're trying to do this quality time. Final thing, acts of service. Nobody is your slave, okay, nobody. When you, you know, men or women. So if you get in a relationship, and I know we were joking about Mr. Michael this morning, and yes, he can cook, but ladies, if you end up with him, if he cooking, then you need to be washing the dishes. You know, if he cut in the yard, then you need to be cleaning up the bathroom. You know, nobody's your slave. Put in, you know, your help, do your due diligence, because then if you don't, then you, you're creating a vacuum. And when you love somebody, you're fully taking care of them. Okay, because remember, this, all these things, if you're focused on one, if you have a focus of one or two, what it's really saying is that you have a lack, that that's a place in your heart that's open that is not being filled. And honestly, if we're going to love properly, we have to understand that we have to fill that gap to whoever we're with. And we have to give all five. And the reason why I brought this whole thing up as far as, you know, for those that can see my screen, it says, you know, a, you know talking about an article and it says, you know, child's bad behavior isn't attention seeking, um, they're actually seeking a relationship. And um, I have some quotes on to the side, and they were saying the brain development research 
shows that in order to feel attached and worthwhile, children need our love, touch, and full-on attention to survive. They could die without it. Indeed, some do. And they've, they've shown things like babies that don't get touched, that nobody picks them up, that nobody plays with them, and how their mental development, how their whole desire to be on the earth wanes. We have to remember that love is all of these things. Love is every single one of these things. Even when you're talking about Enneagram, even if you're talking about Zodiac, it doesn't matter, all this crap. Okay, everybody needs everything. A person is not one personality. People around me might say, you know, Joseph, you know, you're, you know, because I'm more of an intellectual and I actually have had, you know, dates tell me, you know, Joseph, you're kind of uh, boring because they're looking at it from a, a earthly perspective. They want to jump around and have fun. But the truth is, there are times when I jump around and have fun. I just have to be in the mood for that. It's just that most of the time, I'm in the mood for a really great conversation. But sometimes I don't want a conversation. I want to get up and dance. I want to get up and play. You know, sometimes I want to use my imagination. Um, you know, there's not one thing that I don't truly understand. You know, that's how we relate, uh, relate to each other through shared experiences. The fact that even though I'm an intellectual and there are people that I run into that aren't intellectuals, sometimes they do want to know something because they're looking at it like, I'm trying to figure this out. I don't understand this. And at that point, their mind is open for knowledge. And it's sometimes I don't, I don't want to think. I just want to have fun. And at that time, I'm open for fun. OK, so we need to remember and, and understand that we all need all of these things, which means that our person, the person that we're looking for, the person that we're asking God for needs all of these things. So if you're a guy that doesn't believe in touching, you don't want to hold hands, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that, you need to rethink these things. If you are you know, the type of woman who is like, look, you know, I work hard and I don't want to do nothing and blah, blah, blah. You know, you need to rethink. Because acts of service um, is very attractive to a lot of men. OK, so what, here's a, one of the things that I, I, you know, when we first started CSC, um, this came up all the time. You know, because people would say things like all men are the same, all women are the same, or all the men I run into are like this. And there is a reason why that the men that you run into and or women that you run into seem to be the same person, but just in a different body. And the answer is simple. You have a hole in your heart. Because of pain. Because of lack. Because something's missing. And that person that you keep running into, they can feel this puzzle piece. You might not like the rest of the rest that it comes with it, but they're feeling that puzzle piece. It was amazing to me, like right after I got a divorce um, and I went out on my first couple of dates slash, you know, just meeting women. This was, you know, pre-COVID. Um, most of the women that were highly attracted to me the ones that were doing their best to get to me. And honestly, the ones I was doing, like looking at them across the room, and I was like, man, something about that one right there. Almost all of them, kind of hate to say it, they were almost my wife. It was really weird. They were almost my ex-wife. They were just in a different body. They had the same mannerisms. They had the same um, attention. They, they moved the same. Some of them even talked the same. And when I really was into Enneagram, I would always have everybody to take the Enneagram. And most of the women took the Enneagram, at least two of the numbers were the same. Because, you know, back in the day when we were doing Enneagram for all the new people, uh, we would go by your top three numbers. And um, almost all the women I would run into, at least two of the numbers were the same as my ex. 
And one of the first women I was really interested in and had a really great conversation with, all her numbers were the exact same as my ex. It was crazy. But see, that's the whole thing. I didn't recognize that there was a hole in my heart. And it was a hole in my heart that was perfect for that type of personality. And so me and God had a lot of conversations. We had a lot of things going on for me to fully understand them. So in 2 Peter, and this talks about false teachers a little bit, and that's not really what I wanted to talk about in this particular slide, but I didn't want to go in without you understanding what the precursor is, because sometimes people take scripture out of context. But the, the point that I think Peter's trying to say, at least for me, is right here. That's why I bolded it. Um, for you are a slave to whatever controls you. This hole in your heart is controlling you. Okay? Let's give it up. It's controlling you. Just like you know that you have those love languages, people were putting them in the chat. You're a slave to whatever controls you. That desire to feel that is powerful. That's how a lot of women, you know, a lot of women go through, all they want is some attention. They just really want attention. They want attention. They want to be touched. They want to be loved. They want somebody to tell them that they're beautiful. So now some jerk comes along, tells you, tells you that you're beautiful, gives you some attention, rubs you on the shoulder, okay, and then he's filling this hole. But he's a jerk. Everything else about him is, is, is a butt. But he fills the hole. The hole hurts. Okay, so you're, you're a slave to whatever controls you. And when people escape from the wickedness of the world no, by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and then they get tangled up and enslaved by sin again, they're worse off than before. And how many of us have gone through this? Because we don't understand that there's this hole. And I'm not going to be like a lot of people at church and tell you God is going to come in and fill up that hole. Because we know, uh, for mature Christians, we know that a lot of times God fills the hole through people. Okay, it's not always his spirit that's filling that hole. So I'm not going to, you know, go down that, that path. But what I am going to say is, if you know you have this hole, you need to be cognizant of it. And be careful that what comes along with the filling of the hole is something that is positive for you. Because if not, then you will, you will walk like this proverb, okay? A dog returns to its vomit, and another says, a washed pig returns to the mud. That is why we go back to the same person over and over and over again. Because what they're doing is they're filling in our love language. The very thing that we need, where does that need come from? It comes from lack. So what God wants to do is he wants to bless us in what we need. I used to look at the Beatitudes totally different, but God kind of showed me something as I was putting this presentation together. And what you see is like, like you can see in the fourth one especially. Bless those who mourn for they'll be comforted. See, God is basically saying here, you know, there are holes in your heart. But God is trying to say, I got you. I got you. I got you. But God is like, I know you got a hole in your heart. And sometimes the hole in your heart, it, it might look different. See, you understand, a lot of people understand this whole one, those who mourn for they'll be comforted. But let's be real. Um, there are those people out here who their desire is peace on the earth. They really do have that as a desire. Okay, and God knows that. And he's going to help those, those people get blessing in that area. So what do we see with, uh, with, with what God is saying right here? And you've all heard this a million times. Okay, you parents, for all those that are driving and can't see my screen, if you ask your children for uh, a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone? If they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more when your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask him? So you say, Jay, I understand this. Why, why, why am I not being blessed? Why am I not getting what God has for me? I've been waiting. 
Well, I gave you guys a preview before we started this message. I gave you a preview for so for all those that can think back, they're like, okay, what did Jay say? He was talking about toiling. He was showing us that picture. You know, is that what he wants to say? No, that's not what I want to say. What I want to say is right here. Are you fulfilling God's love language? What are you doing for God? Okay, see, most of us, we talk about this all the time. We take, we take, we take, we take, we take, we take. It's kind of funny, like I say, the more I've done for CSC, the more I've done, you know, for God through this, you know, because like I told y'all, he took it over, the more he's been blessing me. I didn't really ask for it like this. And most of y'all know, I don't even really want to be over CSC because it's a lot of pressure to be over a group like this. It's spiritual pressure. You know, because God is going to basically look at me one day when I stand before him, and he's going to basically be like, okay, on um, February 5th, you had 49 people besides you in a Zoom call. So let's go over what you told them, Joseph. And let's go and see what, what lines up with me and what doesn't. And see, I'm going to have to go and deal with that. Okay, but here's the whole thing. The more I do for him, the more time I'm taking with him, the more acts of service I'm doing for him, the more I'm giving my tithe and offering, the more I'm doing my praise and worship, and the more I'm saying, thank you, God. You're so awesome, God. I love you so much, God. The more God does for me. Because you got to love God. People say they love God, but they don't love God because they're not spending no time with God. They're not giving to God. They're not um, spending time with God. They're not reaching out for God. But they'll say, I love God. Okay, what we need to do is think about Jonah. Jonah wrestled with God. Okay, he wrestled in a little bit of a different way than when we want to talk about somebody like Jacob. We all know, I mean, those who don't know the story of Jonah, I'm going to sum it up real quick. Jonah was told, go to, uh, I think it was Nineveh, um, because I want you to tell those people to repent. Jonah was like, I ain't going nowhere. In fact, I want those people to basically ride in hell. So I'm going to go the other way. So he's going the other way. He gets on the ship. The ship gets a storm. A storm comes up. But Jonah's like, man, that's just God. You know, but y'all can throw me overboard. So he throws them overboard. There's a fish that eats them, you know, the whale, you know, eats him. He's in the belly of the whale. And then after three days of basically being digested, but, you know, he's just really probably a skin is burning. He's like, okay, God, I repent. I'm sorry. So, you know, God spits him out. He goes up and tells the, the city and the city repents. Okay. Um, here's the whole thing. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. See, a lot of you guys are trying to hold on to your life. God is calling you to do different things. He is calling you. I'm not, you know, I don't want to make a push for CSC, but he might be calling you to do something at your church. He might be calling you to finally do your time and offering. He might be calling you to just do praise and worship, to get up out your seat and praise him. You know, he might be calling you to pray in the morning. You know, not pray for two minutes, but give him 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Give him so much time you forget what the time is. To pray to him in such a way that you forget when you're praying and when you're talking to yourself. That the prayer is almost like the prayer is never ending. God wants constant communication. But when you're trying to hang on to you, Everything you're asking for, you're going to lose. And as you lose these things and you have these lacks, you end up back here. Where now you're trying to figure out how to, how to fill this hole. But remember, the devil is listening too. He is watching too. And he know how to fill that hole. But he's going to fill that hole and it's going to be attached with a whole lot of crap that you don't want. Okay? So you got to make sure that you're lining up, you know, with what God wants for you so that he'll give you the life that you're looking for. 
Okay. So let's do your takeaways. These are the things I think you should take away, at least right now. We're going to talk about it in a few seconds. But um, love languages are signs of lack in our lives. Um, this lack can lead to mate selection to fill these voids. We need to be conscious of these and allow God to fill them. I also know, like I said before, that God many times will fill them with um, people. But we need to make sure that we understand it. I'm not against the love languages. I decided not to go into the love languages the way most people do, because I'm trying to give you an understanding, because what we want to do is we want to go deeper. OK, I'm, I'm, I believe that God is calling us deeper because he wants you to understand yourself so that you can look into yourself, that you can fix certain key areas or at least be sensitive. Of that area when you're going into a relationship. OK, so, you know, I know some for me, like I like I've said before, I'll go back really quick. Um, you know, I know right now that, you know, physical touch and quality time are big things because I'm single. So when I am with a woman, I'm always, you know, like I'm dating a woman, I'm always thinking in the back of my mind, okay, she's feeling these for now, um, but how will this be later on? Is she, is she so touchy-feely that as soon as I turn back into me, now she's going to have a problem because I'm no longer touchy-feely, because I'm not naturally touchy-feely. You know, that's not my natural way. So I have to think like that and I have to consider that because otherwise what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to get her to fill this quick void. And then once I am in a happy place, in my happy place, once Jay's in his happy place and he goes back to normal and then my desire for this goes from a 10 down to a three, now she might have a problem. So we have to have balance and understand ourselves so that we can actually use that when we're dealing with other people. But we also have to remember that we need to be the five love languages for each and every last person that we're trying to be in a relationship with so they will not have lack. Where true love is, there is no lack. God does not give us lack. If you have lack with God, it is because you are not giving to God. I guarantee if you make a move to do these five love languages for God, God will make sure that you have no more lack. Okay, so the final takeaway is we need to remember to give. Give yourself away, especially towards God and your person. You need to give, if you, I tell, say this all the time, if you're a selfish person, you don't need to get married. And you don't need to be a part of CSC anymore. Because CSC is for people who want to be married. They want to be happy. They want to do what God is calling them to do. Okay? That is what CSC is for. I'm not saying that we, we're not pretentious. We're not, you know, jerks. We're not overly legalistic. We don't really care about all that. We're trying to have fun. We want to make sure that people understand certain things. But what we don't want to do is what we don't want to do is to get into those situations where, like I said, you're married and you're thinking that the other person is supposed to constantly do for you. No, you're supposed to do for them and they're supposed to do for you. And then you do for each other. And if you're, you know, want to have children, if y'all, you know, aren't at that stage or if you already have children, you're supposed to be doing for the children. But if you're not giving yourself away, then you're not doing all of what you could do. And you have to have that balance where you're giving yourself first to God, then you're giving yourself to your mate, and then you're giving yourself to your children. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen.